DNA replication occurs in what we call a semi-conservative method. So we're going to explore the details of what does this actually mean, and what's actually going on in the cells when DNA is replicated in the semi-conservative replication method. So there's three possible methods for replication. There's conservative, semi-conservative, and then disruptive. Well, in conservative, the original DNA molecule would be preserved. And you see that here where the parental DNA is still present throughout the first replication and also the second replication. Semi-conservative, the daughter DNA contains one old and one new strand. We see that here where original DNA, the parental DNA, we have one old and one new, one old and one new, and that's replicated throughout. Then disruptive, where the old and new strands are dispersed in daughter molecules, kind of in this kind of random kind of pattern here. So the, th the three possible methods for replication, the one you really want to focus on is this semi-conservative method. So how does it kind of look? Well, this kind of shows another rendition with dark red and kind of a faint red of semi-conservative, where you still have that one template strand, and then conservative, where that original strand is left untouched, and then disruptive, where there's different sections. Keep in mind that Conservative and disruptive, these little asterisks means they're found not to be biologically significant. And it's this semi-conservative method that is the process for DNA replication. Now, evidence for semi-conservative replication, there's been a lot of studies conducted to help prove this. Here we have one where there's a radioactively labeled nitrogen base, where we're having this uh, nitrogen and we're going through and looking at different densities over different generations of E. coli. And we could see here that semi-conservative is occurring because we have this kind of blending that's occurring. We have this kind of loss in percent of that original strand, um, that original labeled. Um, in the sense, in proving that, we have this um, semi-conservativeness going on. We have that original parental strand, but we have these new strands going through. How does this look in like another experiment? Well, with any experiment, you're gonna have predictions, and these predictions here um, show that we have what would conservative, semi-conservative, and disruptive would look like. So for conservative, we would have that same original strand present at the end. Well, that was proved not to be the case. In disruptive, we have that parental strand, but we'd have a continual mix of them. Those splicings of those daughter cells doesn't occur. This semi-conservativeness, we have that original parental strand, but then we have that kind of replication step where we're keeping that parental strand, but we're getting new strands that are developing. And this was found through that um, radioactively labeling and allows scientists to depict where did specific molecules go, allows them to trace them. And this kind of semi-conservativeness here, where we're seeing that original strand all being this kind of heavy medium, this low in the test tube. Then we have this kind of mixing, we have this kind of light medium, this kind of like medium ranged kind of result. And then we have, when we're making all of the new strands, which is made of that lighter nitrogen, we can see that blending of the two. We see a lot of those new strands being that lighter component, but we still have that uh, mixture of those original parental strands for that first generation. Now, those replication options, again, kind of shows the same kind of process here. Semi-conservative, you have those one dark strand and one yellow strand. Disruptive, there'd be all little different pieces. And conservative, that dark strand would stay the same, and you'd only have new strands. So how does DNA copy itself? Well, it's using that original base. Here's our double helix. We're separating it out. It's using that original base as a template, which is very important. Because it's able to use that template, it really reduces the chance of any errors being made. Now, DNA copying, each cell division must copy the entire DNA sequence, so each of our cell gets a complete copy. Now, the rate of synthesis is very fast. This kind of gives you that rendition here of seeing just how quick it can kind of can occur. In bacteria, they can do about 1,000 bases per second, and in mammals, only about 100 bases per second, but still a very quick overall kind of run through here as we see how quickly we can replicate those DNA strands. Now, the problem with a single replication origin is that a bacterial genome is 4 times 10 to the 6th power. It takes about only 20 minutes to copy, and we see that here. Human genome, um, if we had that single point of replication, because it's so much bigger, would take 10,000 times longer, uh, which would be uh, basically biologically just in inhibitive. So as a result, uh, human genomes, many eukaryotes, have these replication bubbles or these multiple points uh, along the DNA for replication to occur, not just one single site. 
Now, the copying solutions uh, region is an AT, that's an um, adenine and thymine rich. It'll allow easy separation. Remember, those only have two hydrogen bonds. Eukaryotes have multiple replication origins. Humans can have like 10,000 um, origin points, and eventually these will all meet, getting into our newly synthesized DNA. Really helps reduce the time for this to occur. So the copying solutions, a double helix to be copied, is through semi-conservativeness, which basically means one um, our, our double strand, one's being used as a template strand, and the other one is the new replicated strand. Each daughter cell gets one of the original copies, and then one of the new copies to help reduce the chance for errors. Unwinding at one point is used at, at the replication site, and in humans and uh, eukaryotes with long genomes, there will be multiple replication sites, but they will all follow this semi-conservative replication method.